We are a team. As storytellers and dreamers, there is always magic to discover. Once, Once upon, upon a time, time, a Las Vegas showgirl and a comedian magician figured out that even with different perspectives, our adventures and experiences together are really just one, one big, big caper. caper. Um, welcome back, everybody. We are doing it again. Uh, this is a show that we've made appropriate for this weekend. Uh, this is being released right uh, close to Valentine's Day. Yeah. And so it was suggested that we do an episode about keeping passion alive. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. And... Uh, Immediately, you know, I hear these subjects and I'm thinking, okay, I, I got to come up with some pre-thought, some kind of conception of what I intend to communicate in these episodes. And this is one that more or less stumped me, not because I don't have passion in my life, but because I haven't really back-engineered a whole lot of, of how we manage to keep that alive in our relationship. I just kind of live it, you know. It's, it reminds me of being in trouble with my mom for failing to capture photographs because I'm living the moment and not through through my phone or my camera, you know, so. Um, so yeah, that makes sense, right? Sort of. Sort of. I have, I, have a, I have ideas about why you do that. Is that part of the episode? No. Oh, good, okay. It's a whole other. It's not an intervention. It's a whole other episode. Okay. Oh, an intervention is another episode for me? I mean, the coffee problem, maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Okay. Yeah, maybe, perhaps. Uh, intervention. Writing it down so I don't forget. And then what was the other thing you were talking about? Oh, Failing my, to shoot my thoughts. photographs. Yes, being in the moment. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's not the subject of this podcast. So no, I'm just reminded of that because I really don't... I don't put a whole lot of thought into our relationship. Um, I put things. work into it. Do things. No, don't, not like that. <laughs> it's, not, it's not an academic approach to trying to have a romantic relationship. It's, a, it's more of a natural feeling approach. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, that's what passion is. Yeah. It's intuitive. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's the end of the episode. Done. <laughs> There is no formula for passion. I agree. And people want it so bad. People want to know. People want a formula for everything because they don't know how to figure it out themselves. Well, that goes for yeah. anything. It's, it's human nature. We want to go. We want a secret and we want it to go fast and nope. cheap. It's not human nature. It isn't? Okay. And I'll tell you why. It starts with a P. Go ahead. The patriarchy. Oh, my God. Okay, yes. Yay. I don't I'm, think we've done a single episode yet with the word patriarchy in there. So. I think we have, but have maybe we? not. I don't know. I just hear it frequently. Um, yes, I agree with you about the problems of the patriarchal the foundation of what's... The has yes. caused us to not trust our intuition, not trust ourselves, and I think that's why there's a lot of people that don't uh, have access to passion as much as performers do. I agree that that is a contributing factor, okay. but you know, it's I I was just talking about the <laughs> the insistence that there has to be an easier way, you know, everybody wants a shortcut, that's all. Okay. I'm writing it down and we'll talk about the patriarchy one of these days. That is all about the patriarchy. The energy of the patriarchy do 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 this is the way. <laughs> do do. Do. Okay. Do we have to bleep I, that out? Doo -doo? Doo -doo 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 -doo. No, you don't have to mark. You don't have to mark that down. Okay. All right. Okay. So, I want to bring into this conversation a conversation I had with a friend who is no longer in my life, and I don't one hundred percent know the reasons. I know some of the reasons, uh, and it's sad because I really looked up to her as a woman and enjoyed our times together in burlesque and uh, creating my crazy ideas and shows. So anyway, she 
she was a self-identified cougar. And I believe when we were hanging out, she was in her early 40s, mid 40s, with two teenage boys and a divorce under her belt. And a pretty young, studly husband. And I'm looking at her like, I mean, she's beautiful. And she has beautiful fake boobs and and any work done other than that. I have no idea. But I was like, how do you keep him interested? How do you keep that that fire? Because I could see the passion in their relationship. And it was just so inspiring to watch. This was before you and I really connected. We were still friends. Just friends. And so I asked her, I said, how, how, how do you do this? How do you, I mean, you've, done, you've been married and divorced. And you see the problems that happened in your last relationship. What, what do you do now? What's different? And she says, I choose this every day. Mm-hmm. I recommit to the relationship every single morning when I wake up. And I was like, mind blown. And so, and that was, when she told me that, it was probably about a year. So I was still playing with boys. Probably about a year before we started falling in love. I know who you're talking about, right? You do. Yeah, I I figured. Okay. You do know. Uh, And so I learned a lot in my boy phase. (laughs) Boy play toy phase, play toy, boy, toy phase. And I was like, okay. When, when Felix and I had that special hug that I talked about in one of our episodes, I don't have my notes in front of me. One of the episodes I talked about this hug with the solar plexus igniting. I was like, uh, this is something special. And it's just something that I am going to commit to every single day. And I have every morning, even though you're snoring and, (laughs) and I have to nudge you. I recommit every day. So there's no need for a ring. I, I, we do have rings. This was his grandmother's that he. Yeah. My grandparents were an interesting part of my background, but I have, I gave Athena, my grandmother's very understated wedding ring, um, which, uh, kind of in a interesting Cinderella way fit, even though their heights are about a foot and a half difference. <laughs> what? She was three foot tall. Three she foot was six. not three foot tall, but... Um, she was a tiny lady. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, nevertheless, um, I wear my grandfather's ring, which is slightly larger than what is necessary to wear on the, the traditional finger. And I think we do that... I initially was inspired to give Athena my grandmother's ring um, as something maybe she could wear on a necklace or, or something like that. But at the time, Athena was also a Lyft driver and it seemed, it seemed appropriate to send out a signal that she was not available for a couple of scary passengers that she's had. Yeah. He convinced me that I should wear this ring. <laughs> <laughs> convenient I think convenient convenient oh, all right well I'm not trying to <laughs> to mark my territory oh no? Uh, no 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 okay not at all hmm. let me know if I don't you, think so I don't feel I don't feel the compulsion <laughs> um I don't know I don't I don't feel the compulsion I like um signaling that I'm in a committed relationship and I certainly um communicate that to people verbally. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely no secret. Uh, in fact, we're, you know, even with this project, we're kind of a, a public couple. So, yeah. yeah, so that's out there. Yep, it is. Mm. So yes, no, no uh, marriage certificate necessary. I don't, I don't see it. Uh, and the, I brought up in a previous episode how that can change personalities or it yes. can add uh, this attitude of taking things for granted or the, uh, modifying expectations. Um, 
shifting responsibility for happiness to the partner. Um, we forgot about that. Yeah. That was one of our rules of engagement. That I was. totally forgot to bring it up. That was a big one, I think. Yeah. That was that one kind of... Um, I think that marriage... The kind of, the, putting um, words to it. I've always had a sensation of that, um, but putting words to it helped me. And, and um, thank you for that. I've passed that uh, on to other people, including my children. Yep. But... Sometimes you just don't get it. Yeah, I it think took me a while it, to get it. If if you're able, you should maybe describe what we are talking about. Yeah. Like it's I'm going it's to. simple enough to understand. But. Okay, so there's two points that I want to make here. First is quicker than the second. So the first thing I'm going to say about the marriage certificate, and this guy right here is very, if you can tell, very logical, practical. You have to see it to believe it. Kind of thinking. I am not the way. I'm definitely not that way. I am a very intuitive, woo-centric kind of person. I spend time with myself a lot, trying to hear my inner voice and tuning into all the feels. Okay, so that's kind of where I come from. I also use astrology in my business and my life. Pretty, not intensely, but it's nice to know what energies I'm working with. I mean, one morning I woke up with so much anxiety. I couldn't, I was like, why am I anxious right now? And it just turned, it turned out that Mercury was turning direct again from a Mercury retrograde. And all I had to do was clear the energy, say, hey, please clear this energy. And I immediately felt better. So that was like eye-opening to me. Like I have the power to relieve some of the stuff. So Long story short, I just wanted to kind of set that up. When we sign a document, any kind of contract, Saturn comes into play. And Saturn is all about responsibility and, and um, what's the, responsibility is the best word for Saturn. And when you take a relationship that is built on love and then you add responsibility to it, it's, it's a heavy weight to bear and this is why I won't ever get married again because I love the passion we have we're we've been together six years and it still feels like the honeymoon phase there's you know it's a little less than it used to be but it's not like I still feel like we're dating even though we're living together we're fully committed in a monogamous relationship it still feels like that fun time the honey the honeymoon phase so that's what I'll say about signing that contract okay that's it's it's you're bringing saturn into the picture and saturn is all about responsibility and and you have to do it this way and it's like we don't need that but our rules of engagement kind of was a, a verbal agreement i guess yeah so one specific one that i was hoping that you would expound upon i will uh is the placing the responsibility of happiness on your partner so, so <laughs> that, and part of the reason I would love for you to explain that is that not everybody who pays attention to the silly things that we do in public, uh, namely this, mm -hmm. um, not everybody is single or in a new relationship. So I think that's one of the ways that people can modify an existing relationship, mm. yeah. uh, or at least their their treatment of their own relationships or their yeah. own partners to in the okay. pursuit of happiness. I, okay, I can do that in two ways. So after my separation now I initiated the separation from my uh, ex-husband and I was just like I'm not happy I need to figure some poop out and I am ending this relationship and of course everyone was like oh my god what are you doing you have this perfect life and no no just because everything was perfect on paper and to the outside everyone was happy did not mean that I was happy <laughs> so uh, I started listening here and I started yoga, meditation, all this stuff. I went into therapy because I was like, okay, there's got to be some help here to help me figure out what, why I don't feel well. I don't feel okay. I don't feel whole. There's like the gaping hole here, gaping. And so one of the things that she, the first things that she taught me was that you're responsible for, responsible for your happiness, you and you alone. It's not your children. It's not your husband. It's not your boss. It's not anyone else in your world. You are responsible for your happiness. And if this is the first time you've ever heard this, this is what it means. It means that if someone behaves a certain way outside of you, then 
uh, and it sometimes it could trigger you or cause you to be unhappy or uh, pissed off at them or whatever. Oh, is that a ding? No. Okay. Then you can either respond or react. And most of the time, since we're all having patriarchal stress disorder issues, trauma-induced responses, we react. You did this, so you're the reason I'm unhappy. And I noticed I was doing that because after I left my husband, broke up the family, I spent six months just really like soul searching, not dating, not doing none of that. I was just like, it's all about me and what I'm doing here and what makes me happy. And it was like eye opening. And then when I started introducing other people into the mix, boys, then I really started to see how I was holding other people accountable for my happiness. And it's easy when you have children, uh, when children are playing and running around and you're like in a bad mood already and you're just, you're at, you're on an edge and they're like being silly and roughhousing and knock something over. You immediately blame them for the discomfort you're feeling because they did something wrong. That's holding someone accountable for your happiness. I've done it with Felix. Like even since we made this agreement, <laughs> I, I told him, I waited him. This was our rule. One of our rules of engagement. I can't believe we forgot about it because it's the most important one. I said, hey, you're not responsible for my happiness and I'm not responsible for your happiness. And then, of course, the one is like, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Let's have some fun. We'll see how, how this goes. And he was like, what the, <laughs> what the, what does this mean? And so when I talked about in a previous episode or yeah, when he talked about his juicy bit or I, I talked about my juicy bit, I guess, about hugging somebody and your hand going a little too close to the upper butt cheek. I was like mad about it. And I was like, no, I'm not going to destroy my center right now just because I saw him do something that would upset somebody else. He's not, that action is not going to affect me. And so I had to learn. And there's been times in our relationship here at the house that things don't get done or whatever. I have to remind him. And I have to take myself and put myself in a time out to remind myself he's not responsible for your happiness. No matter what he does, you are the one that's responsible. So focusing on good. It's a little, some people will say it's a lot, a lot of toxic positivity. But if you allow yourself to feel the feelings, especially when you think it's them that has upset you, then you have a better chance of working the energy through your body than to stay uh, pissed off at someone and sitting there like seething and saying, you need to apologize. It's your fault, all of these things. So, and it's, it's some of that is um, the forgiveness practice, the Hawaiian Ho'oponopono. So you forgive them for being human, really. And you forgive yourself for holding on to that animosity. So... I hope I explained it. Did I explain it good? You did. You think I, I think that maybe we will, you know, put some links out there for uh, your Hawaiian reference because that's, you know, yeah, I can uh, do that. that's not a commonly known thing or even it's the not. spelling of it. Um, I know how to spell no. it. Well, yes, but you lived in Hawaii, <laughs> right? Yeah, trying to give directions. Oh, yeah, you take King Kamehameha Highway, turn right at Kailua. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you so, just say king cam yeah. anyway, okay so, so I'll that that link, link will to be below in yeah the, uh, the... i have a great ho o pono pono it's exactly how it sounds ho o h o we'll put the link in the show description p o n o p o n o okay we'll put the link in the show description. i have a great uh meditation ho pono pono meditation that i use for those times and uh, i've also found when i use that meditation even like for road rage, because I still have road rage. Uh, yeah. Well, it was easy to let go of the road rage when I was driving for Lyft because I could not exude any. You had to behave yourself. I had to behave myself do, because yeah. I had people in the back that were raiding me. <laughs> so it's come. It's come trickling back. Thank you, Las Vegas drivers. <laughs> that may be an episode too. I don't know how I deal with it. I mean, I you've been on the phone with me in a 
issue instructions to people who are upsetting me. <laughs> you um, issue instructions, aloud, but, but I don't they can't get, hear you. I don't get too mad. I mean, I don't know. It's, I've it's heard you get a couple, mad a couple I times. get frustrated, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you I, don't believe in anger. That's a whole nother. That's a different thing, yeah. Yeah. So there's the, the uh, explanation of, <laughs> I, I think maybe that's what it is. That's the key to keeping our passion alive is that we don't hold each other accountable for our happiness. I think that's a big part of it, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's intuitive. I mean, what is passion? In, well, what is passion to you in, a, in regards to a relationship? Perhaps this is something I should have come prepared to, to discuss. Um, defining. I can. What I can define it first. To me. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Everyone, take note. <laughs> Professor Felix is without words today. <laughs> this is what I usually try to describe things in feeling, um, and I think my children are both, especially the youngest, the little goth girl is uh, she has uh, that one special perception called synesthesiology. Synesthesia. Synesthesia. Uh, Ology would be the study of synesthesia. Correct. Okay, I'm making stuff up, making up science terms as I go. She's trying to study it too, passively. Passively, she doesn't doesn't realize she's studying it. But anyway, uh, I will describe it as a feeling. So passion for me, especially in regards to a relationship, it feels alive. It feels vital. It's a living, breathing thing that we create together, like a, a space or an energy between us that interacts. And it some days is a little low, and some days it's on fire. And, you know, passion, I think, is really important to both of us as artists and creators. So I think it's easy for us to tap into passion because... That's what we do on stage. I, that's what I feel. I feel like it's all one passion is love and belonging and connectedness and beauty and trust and and just this ball of fire that exists between us. And like when we came together for that hug and the, the solar plexus, our solar plexi, is that a plural? They, they, you know, I think that's where the passion ignited and we just stoked the flames as we go through our days and recommit and I like the know. analogy of it being similar to the sensation of artwork and the passion for say a painting that you're working on or work uh, a piece of writing that you're working on because mm-hmm. uh, that the sensation of loving what you're creating kind of you know comes and goes in the process of creating a bigger work or, mm. or whatever but uh, um, uh, yeah, I like that. That yeah. I can, I can agree with that one. Okay. Yeah. That just kind of helped me to also refine it into like a gardener, and they're creating, they're cultivating. So passion, I don't think it it fizzles. It can fizzle, if you're not tending to it. Like it's a garden, like you, right. you keep adding to it and appreciating it and loving it and, yeah, that's passion for you. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> what is passion to you in regards to relationship or even creating art, your work, passion for life? Comment below. Yeah, that's something we always encourage you to do, of course, is uh, interact with us. Let us know what your observations are, your questions are, and we will do our best. In fact, uh, um, if you want, you know, you can certainly keep things anonymous and we'll add resources again for for reaching us uh, anonymously or if you want to tell us to not disclose who you are but uh, by the same token uh, we'd love to announce you know people who are interacting with us and Mm -hmm. being friends of the podcast yeah 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 thanks for coming along on this journey with us yes see you next time happy valentine's day Mm, thanks happy valentine's day (laughs) bye everybody 
We can't keep doing this without you. Give us just a little bit of your time by subscribing, sharing, rating, or talking about One Big Caper with someone else. We truly appreciate your support. We want to hear your stories. Visit OneBigCaper.com to get to know us even more. This episode of One Big Caper was published in 2022. All rights to broadcast in whole or in part are the property of Gazellus Productions, LLC. 